Hello, uh, this is Sammy, and I'm going to show you a few things about this incredible app here, Genius Gem Tracks. We're going to talk about 6 over 4. 6 over 4 is quarter note triplets. So, first thing we should do is actually explain how quarter note triplets are created before we move on. Uh, I'm using the 4-4 four, four, even eighths metronome now with a setting on the polyrhythms of quarter note triplets. That's all I'm doing. Now what you hear here is two layers of rhythm. One layer of rhythm is the quarter notes that we count. The other layer of rhythm is this, which is the quarter note triplets. So how exactly do we play the quarter note triplets? The whole idea is as follows. First of all, we have to play eighth note triplets here. So it's like this. Okay? Now, we group these in groups of two. So we'll accent the first and leave the second unaccented. So it's going to be something like this. It's uh, important to note at this point that the phrase that I'm playing only has two notes, the accented and the unaccented one. Okay? So if you look at that as a phrase, it sounds alone, without it being triplets or whatever else, like this. Okay? The fact that it sounds so, let's say, great, is the fact that this is actually triplets. So it's not just like everybody would expect, but it's like this. Now, the natural thing for triplets is to be played in groups of three. Now, we're playing triplets in groups of two. So, since we're playing it in groups of two, it sounds like this. This is the whole idea behind 6 over 4. Now, let's do it again. At this time, I'll be playing the triplet subdivisions so that you see how this whole thing goes. Okay, now, these are all triplets, as I said. Okay, but I group them in twos. And this is the way to produce quarter triplets. Now let's see how Quarter note triplets are used in a song. Uh, we have Cantaloupe Island here, preloaded. So, everything is ready to play so that you see how it sounds. The piano plays something like that. So this plays with a bass, quarter note triplets. So, now that we can uh, have a basic understanding of what happens, let's listen to this whole thing without the metronome, like two jazz waltz meters. So this is two Jaswell's measures inside the 4-4 measure. Now let's put the metronome so that we can see the two working together. So you have the underlying beat, which is here. I'm playing the metronome notes with my little finger and the other instruments with these two. So. Okay. Now, 
what happens with the drums is they play three notes here. So it's now this is just as a rhythmic pattern for you to understand what happens. This is what happens rhythmically here. You have two, three, four. On top of the four, and then each of these is subdivided into three notes here. And this all over four. So it's four, six, and eighteen. Now let's play a bit. Something that I would like to stress out is the following. When you have such a groove playing, when you're carving something but playing something over that, if you want to make it kind of more believable that this is what is actually happening, which of course is only happening for the listener, you count other things than what the listener counts. This is the whole idea here. It's the rhythmic illusion part. You could actually subdivide those sixes, not just in threes like the drums do, but you can subdivide it differently, for example, in fours. That, of course, means that for each of the quarter notes, instead of playing takata 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 you're going to play takata 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 Which means that instead of 18 notes, you're going to play 24 notes inside the measure. Which, of course, is basically like playing six tuplets on the beat. Let me show you how this is. Again. So you can go from threes to fours, back to threes, back to fours, all this time giving the impression that you're playing sixes, when in reality you're just playing a four. This is the whole idea here. This is the illusion. So, let's play it. <laughs> 